So in today's web dev tip, we're going to take a look at how you can use TypeScript with HTML elements. So hopefully you're familiar with certain methods that are available on the document object within the browser, such as query selector and query selector all. So we're going to go through some examples of how you might use these to grab elements on the page and then use TypeScript to actually type the uh, variables and the uh, elements that you're selecting. So let's have a look at an example. So let's just imagine that we've got a page set up and let's say it has a form on there and we want to get one of the input elements on the actual form. So what we would normally do in our JavaScript code is use something like document.querySelector and let's say we wanted to get uh, an element with a class of form control. Let's just assume there's just one there and we're just going to use the uh, query selector to grab the uh, only form control on the page. And what TypeScript will actually do for us at this point is in the input element, you'll be able to see that it's actually been typed as an element. So this element refers to a HTML element. It's probably not the best naming for it, uh, but it will be a HTML element. And if we access the uh, input variable that we've created, you'll see hopefully a list of familiar properties and methods that you would normally find on any HTML element like add event listener. Uh, for example, we can append some new uh, child nodes to it uh, and all of the different properties that you might expect such as the uh, aria properties and there's some further methods uh, further down the list as well. We've got things like ID and inner HTML. So uh, if this was an input element, we would probably want to get its value uh, so that we could do something with it in our code. So if we try and access its value there, you might notice that it isn't actually available on this element. And that's because by default, a TypeScript has returned from the query selector function a type of element. As I said, it's a bit misleading because it doesn't really refer to what type of element it is. And uh, so the properties that we've got available to us on the input variable are just the standard HTML properties that are available to any HTML element. So what we'll actually need to do if we want to be able to successfully access the value property of input is to actually make sure that TypeScript is typing this uh, returned object from the query selector function as a HTML input element. And luckily uh, TypeScript provides these types for us by default in a library that's included. And so we can just say that the uh, input element is a HTML input element type. And now you can see that uh, we've got the value property available to us on that input uh, variable. So whenever you're using TypeScript within the browser and using uh, certain DOM operations like the query selector, for example, you'll need to make sure that you want to type the elements that are returned uh, from what you're expecting. And TypeScript can't work that out, unfortunately, just by default. It can't work out that the element you're selecting here with this class is actually a HTML element because this is running at compile time rather than at runtime when we actually know what type of element we're going to get. And there's lots of other different types of elements that you can select as well. So there's things for, say, for example, select elements. So if we had a select drop down box, then we could obviously use this uh, to make sure that we've typed our. Uh, returned object correctly and all of these types are actually inside of the library provided by TypeScript it's uh, the DOM library so in Visual Studio Code you can actually dig into those to actually see if there's any additional properties that you need to know about uh, or if you need to find a particular property you can search through this file as well but as you can see here we've got the HTML select element and you can see that it's got some additional properties over the HTML element uh, in terms of uh, an autocomplete and also disabled attribute. There you go, there's a way of using the query select function and making sure that the elements that you return are typed correctly so that you can access the correct properties. So that's it for this tutorial. Make sure you stay tuned for more web dev tips.